Hello listeners, this talk is about outflanking the left from the left and red pilling people. I'm going to discuss an interesting strategy with you, but as a way of providing some background and introducing the strategy, I'd like to tell you a couple of stories. For many years I used to write on a forum for much of that time, I would say I was libertarian, but partly for my own reasons, I began to become disillusioned with libertarianism. This was a precursor to uh, discovering the alt-right. I spent some time where I wasn't really sure or, or entirely sure what I thought, but I knew that there was something wrong with a lot of mainstream political thought, including libertarianism. Also, I began to generally become um, disillusioned or bored with that forum because certain people seemed to uh, make very predictable arguments in, in every discussion that occurred on the forum, and I was one of those people. Uh, pretty much you could have ghost written my answers and you could have ghost written anyone else's answers there. So I went away from that forum. I, I stopped even looking at the forum for a while. At the same time, I was also on another forum. There was some overlap and that forum was a conservative forum. I didn't really uh, fit in there or rather there was something I couldn't quite put my finger on. I've since learnt what, what the problem was. But there was something I couldn't quite put my finger on uh, and it, certain things didn't sit well with me and so on. So so I eventually stopped going to that forum also. Now, I went back to the, the other forum and I do occasionally still uh, just to lurk and see what people were up to there to see the way they reacted to particular um, current of fairs and so on, current events, and most of the time there wasn't very much that was interesting there, but occasionally I saw things that, that were interesting, and I should say at this point, I hasn't quite discovered the reactosphere and the alt-right in general. Nevertheless, I, there was one incident that was quite uh, interesting. Now, there were two people on that forum uh, two of the, the major posters on that forum, with whom I had discussed many things many times, and they were discussing something at, at one point. They were in a thread discussing gay marriage. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I was largely libertarian, although at this point in the proceedings I, I would say I wasn't. But nevertheless, I had that sort of libertarian attitude towards gay marriage of, well, if they're not doing, if they're not affecting me, then it's none of my business, rah, rah, rah. You probably know the the standard argument. <coughs> Pardon me. Now, at this point also, um, there were really no people left on that forum who were um, even vaguely right-wing. They'd all disappeared. Some of them had been banned. Others had just drifted away because the forum, of course, was was um, quite left-wing. The moderators ranged from being sort of uh, useful idiots who who put up with um, a lot of nonsense from the people on the left and were sort of vaguely sympathetic to notions of free speech to moderators who were quite left-wing and some of the, the regulars were rabidly left-wing and so on. So these two people were discussing gay marriage. Now, one of them, he, he, I guess he's probably in about his mid-40s now, he had grown up in Ireland, the Republic of Ireland, and during the time when he grew up, Ireland was quite conservative, the Catholic Church had a lot of influence and so on, and sometimes he used to talk about that and say it was a bad thing and so on. But generally speaking, he was a small L liberal. You could tell in some ways he hasn't fully uh, kicked over the traces of his upbringing, but he was liberal. The other person was extremely liberal, and 
he he would often rant and rave about different things and really get stuck into people. And he, I believe, has a sister who is a lesbian. And anyway, the Irish guy at one point said something along the lines of, although he didn't agree with people on the right who, or, or people, religious people who, who were opposed to gay marriage, he could understand where they were coming from. And he sympathised um, with the idea that they felt like their culture was under attack or they were losing their culture. At that point, the other guy jumped right down his throat, completely down his throat, and started tearing shreds off him. He got really upset with him, just for daring to suggest that he could um, perhaps understand how someone with whom he didn't agree actually felt. And it was very interesting to me observing that, because um, I had vaguely been aware of the idea that that um, sometimes the left would would eat itself, but that was, it it really crystallised at that point. It was actually very shocking. I, I had a very visceral reaction to it. Actually, I was um, sort of quite disgusted actually at the way the uh, the far left liberal really jumped down the thro the throat of this other guy. I had I had a real uh, a, a, a very, very strong visceral reaction to it. It was very strange, actually, at the time. Um, but nevertheless, he did. And that actually sort of set in motion a series of events. And, and very shortly thereafter, um, because I was still on that conservative forum, someone uh, posted a video by someone in the reactor sphere or, or sort of on the alt-right. And that was sort of my opening into all of this. This was, I don't know, I think maybe three years ago, something like that. And so witnessing this event um, and also uh, being exposed shortly thereafter to the alt-right was like a whole world opening up for me. Now, I'll, I'll say a few other things about um, that, that guy um, who jumped down the throat of the other... One. I, I have actually met him in real life, and we we didn't speak about politics then, um, and you know we got along okay. It was fine, and and you know he's an interesting person. He's had an interesting life, and so on, and and we had lots of things um, about which we could talk. Um, but he, when I've, whenever I used to debate him on that forum, we used to get into these really long exchanges of of arguments. He always used to say to me that he didn't like the other right-wing posters um, on that forum, but he liked me because he thought my ideas weren't really nasty. I mean, I wonder what he would think of them these days. Um, and that I argued in good faith. One of the reasons I eventually left is because as I mentioned, people fell into particular roles. But one thing I began to notice, and, and I couldn't f fully articulate this at the time, but upon reflection, and, and I've reflected on uh, interactions with him in general, but also observing that exchange between him and the Irish guy, um, one thing I realised was that he never actually argued in good faith. He never conceded a point um, he was sort of a microcosm of how the left operates in general. And so I actually began to realize that engaging the left in that way is not really the best way of engaging them. So this brings me to, to my next story. Um, the other day I, I encountered a link to something about a, a website called GitHub, which is... Um, it's a an open source community for programmers, computer programmers, coders, and I found this story on a, um, a neo reactionary blog. I've since lost the link, uh, but anyway, basically the upshot of it is that there's some sort of um, general template for a code of conduct for these um, coding communities that's been doing the rounds. And it was adopted by this particular website, GitHub. 
Um, and th you know, there was a, a lot of fallout over this. So I'll just read a, a section of this code of conduct because it's quite interesting. All right, so here we go. Our open source community prioritizes marginalized people's safety over privileged people's comfort. We will not act on complaints regarding reverse isms, including reverse racism, reverse sexism, and cisphobia. Reasonable communication of boundaries, such as leave me alone, go away, or I'm not discussing this with you. Refusal to explain or debate social justice concepts. Communicating in a tone you don't find congenial. Criticizing racist, sexist, cissexist, or otherwise oppressive behavior or assumptions. All right, so that's all, you know, pretty standard leftist nonsense, of course, of course. Uh, and they go on to um, talk about diversity. And um, there's one bit, let me just find it, where is it? Um, all right, so they, they talk about, um, we explicitly honor diversity in, and then list, list a whole lot of things, and then they get to uh, political beliefs. <laughs> So and and of course they mention race and so on in there. Now of course those two things are completely at odds with each other because at the start they basically give open license to the people to accuse, you know, white, straight straight white males of of being racist or sexist or cisphobic or or whatever it is, and there's sort of no recourse that people can have against that. Now, at this point in time, I'm not greatly affected by these kinds of things. When I read this, I sort of thought, oh yeah, kind of raised one eyebrow and, and I wasn't particularly moved by this because it's just the standard nonsense that they go on with um, at this point. But in uh, trying to find this code of conduct, I, because I, I had uh, closed the original link, I did a search for it and I stumbled upon a programming Form another programming form, and there was one guy there who was um, sort of in a state of confusion or disbelief about the whole thing. Now, it wasn't that he was um, sort of in a state of, you know, but my freedom of speech, you know, it wasn't that kind of thing. There was, you know, no my freedom of speech. Uh, because, you know, at this, at this point in time, people have sort of... Um, uh, accepted, you know, they've, they've ceded all this ground to the left and they accept all this nonsense that, that goes on that, you know, hate speeches and free speech and all this stuff. Um, but the whole way he was, he, he responded was more of the m m rationality variety, um, you, you know, along the lines of, but this doesn't make sense, it's contradictory and it's, you know, it's unreasonable and, you know, how can those people accuse me but I have no recourse to to defend myself and, you know, all this sort of stuff, right? And he was freaking out about this. And um, and then he sort of, um, you know, th threw all of his toys out of the cot and um, and said, well, you know, that's it. I'm, I'm going to another site then and I'm going to take all the coding I've done with me, you know, or, you know, or the projects or whatever with me. Um, <laughs> it was it was interesting to watch this because a few years ago I would have had the same reaction. Um, but... I, I don't these days, but it nevertheless was interesting to watch that. Also because this guy's basically delusional for a number of reasons. Firstly, because let's say, for instance, he takes his uh, his bat and ball and, and goes to another site and uh, you know, starts coding there and that site starts to get popular, starts to produce some interesting things. Well, you know what's going to happen, of course. The same thing that happened to this to GitHub, the one that he's he's quitting. At some point, the SJWs will follow him to that site, and, or or their their white knights will will um, follow him to that site, and the process will repeat itself. And eventually, one of a few things will happen to this guy. Um, either either he will um, just sort of give up. And, and throw his hands in the air and say, oh, yeah, okay, whatever, you know, I'll just try, try to make the best of a bad situation. Or, um, of course, he might get really red-pilled um, and, and start to resist this or start to have other dangerous ideas. Um, or another thing, which I won't really go into any detail here because I'll 
probably discuss this in another talk at some point, uh, is that those kinds of people might end up moving abroad even or, or um, certainly working for um, employers or, or on um, fora or, or whatever that are based abroad, you know, in something like Singapore or something like that. Um, or or they, they'll just form very um, tight, knit, closed, secret communities where... Um, they're very careful about admitting new people. So, you know, they basically won't be open source at that point. So these two things, firstly, uh, witnessing the conversation between uh, two leftists a few years ago, and then this guy's reaction to uh, SJW sort of invading the, um, the, the uh, programming community, they've led me to develop... Or, or devise a strategy, and I'm sure this is not really new. I, I'm sure there are other people already doing this to one extent or another. Um, but basically, it's to outflank the left from the left. Now, there's there's already um, a lot of that occurring f from the right to the right, so outflanking the right on the right, and you can see that with um, you know, things like the conservative meme. And so on, and and that's a you know a really good idea. It's a very good approach, uh, but this is a, a another. Uh, you could think of it as another uh, arrow in the quiver, if you like. It's a completely different approach. So rather than um, basically uh, either trying to argue with people logically or or, or trying to sort of um, troll them from the right, it's actually to to um, uh, imitate them in such a way that you can out, uh, you can be more of a leftist than they are leftists. And, and I'll get to how and why in a second. One thing I'll just say, though, is it's related to Poe's Law, but it's a little bit different to Poe's Law. I'll just explain what Poe's Law is for those who have never heard of Poe's Law before. Um, Poe's Law originally occurred because someone was having a discussion with, with another person on a website discussing something to do with Christianity. So, it, it goes as follows. Without a clear indicator of the author's intent, parodies of extreme views will, to some readers, be indistinguishable from sincere expressions of the parodied views. That's the Wikipedia definition. So basically what happened was that person, he... He was arguing with someone and he wasn't really sure whether that person was... Uh, an, an extreme right-wing Christian or whether that person was someone trolling him by pretending they were, were a, an extreme right-wing Christian because um, when you're that far out on the extreme, it's impossible to, to tell whether someone's trolling you or whether they're actually sincere. So that's Poe's Law, basically. Now, it's related to Poe's Law, but it's, it's a little bit different because um, it is... It's trolling, but it's uh, not trolling by, by trying to be funny or trying to sort of engage in things like uh, reductio ad absurdum, that kind of stuff. It's actually to, to appear very sincere, um, and, and actually to be sincere in, in some sense. Um, so it, it's a kind of um, psyops, it's, it's spying, basically. It's sort of undercover work and all of this sort of stuff. Now, this... I have actually heard of a couple of instances of this being done, um, and the people were discovered. It took quite some time to be discovered. Um, but probably this is already being, being done by many people, but they're just doing it so well that no one actually knows that they're doing it. All right, so here, here is the, uh, the formulation of the strategy. All right, and there are several parts to this. So, you know, if you're feeling a bit uh, mischievous, you can, you can do this. Or if you want to try a different approach, you can do this. Because, you know, the, the rice has been trying the same thing for decades, if not longer, and losing. And, you know, there's that, that old definition. I think it's attributed to, to um, Albert Einstein that the definition of insanity is uh, doing the same thing repeatedly and hoping for a different result. And that's what the rice has been doing. So I think it's time to, to try something different. So here it is, the, uh, the strategy. The first part is establishing yourself. 
So what, what you're going to do is you're actually going to take on the persona of an SJW and, and argue as an SJW against people. Um, so, you know, it's, it's all, you're not meant to reveal who you are. You're meant to be very sort of uh, sincere about it. And you're meant to sort of lull people into a false sense of security. So the first thing is you have to adopt the persona of an SJW. And there are several subparts to this. So firstly, you need to carefully construct an identity ahead of time. So, you know, decide who that's going to be. You know, you're going to be a, a black lesbian or something like that. Um, or, or, I don't know, a um, New York City Jew or something. So, basically, you construct your identity ahead of time. So, it's probably quite worth writing this down um, so that you don't get caught out later on in an inconsistency. Uh, because many of the ways in which people get caught out when, when they try these kinds of tricky things is that, you know, they, they're telling a lie and then they trip themselves up. They, they sort of um, uh, create an unforced error, basically. So to that extent, it's probably, it, it probably needs to be something that you're at least somewhat familiar with. Um, so you probably need to be familiar with certain ideas, terminology, authors, that kind of thing, uh, because if p particularly the more focused you make your persona, the, the more um, uh, of a niche it occupies, the more you have to really know your stuff, otherwise you'll get caught out very quickly. So I would suggest having a file with all of that information so that you can refer to it and do that ahead of time. You don't want to be caught on the fly. You want to, you want, always want to make sure that everything you do is deliberate and that you're prepared for everything. So you never get caught out in, in a sort of an inopportune moment. Everything has to be very deliberate. So all, further to that, you any new information that, that's very pertinent to the character that you've created um, needs to be added to that file, basically. So if you give out any sort of new details about yourself, make sure you add them to that file so that you can keep track of everything. All right, the next part is conducting yourself. So, again, you don't want to get tripped out for, for something silly, uh, tripped up for something silly. So, firstly... Find out what the, the rules are on that particular forum. And and I'm really talking about a forum here. I mean, you could apply this to um, Twitter or something else. But I'm particularly talking about uh, a forum. So find out what the rules are on that forum. And don't get um, caught out on a technicality such as swearing. If they don't like swearing, then don't swear on that forum. Because that's just a silly way to get caught out. Everything, harassment, the whole lot, the whole box and dice, basically. Um, don't get caught out on a technicality. Now, having said that, although there will be formal rules, there will also be informal rules, and there will also be um, uh, a pecking order on the forum, and there are, certain people will have a particular tone to how they write and argue and so on. And some of this may sort of... Um, uh, bend or even break the rules. So, of course, in any situation, in any social situation, uh, there there's always a lot of stuff that goes on below the surface. And you need to become cognizant of all of that so that you can uh, maybe even bend the rules yourself. Though, you know, it's probably not a good idea to do that immediately. But nevertheless, uh, you know, figure out what you can and can't get away with. Uh, but generally speaking, try to stay within the rules. Uh, the next thing, again, in terms of not getting caught out on a technicality is do not smurf. I know what do I mean by do not smurf. Smurfing um, is a term that basically means having multiple accounts. It, it comes from that, uh, that old cartoon. Some of you may be old enough to remember that um, show the Smurfs. And the Smurfs was basically about all these little blue people and they, were, they all had uh, funny white hats, if I remember correctly. And there were, there were lots of these Smurfs. But basically only you know, half a dozen to a dozen of them were actually indistinguishable from the others based upon 
particular um, features or clothing they wore or and, and therefore had their own personalities. But basically there was just this sort of massive indistinguishable Smurfs and then a handful of um, sort of uh, particular Smurfs that, that played a more central role in the show. So Smurfing is when you have a whole lot of accounts and usually the way Smurfing is done is that um, someone will, um, they'll log into one of their accounts, they'll write something and then they'll log out, they'll log into another account and then that, that uh, sort of other account will agree with them. So it looks like they've got backup basically on that form. Now occasionally people get a little bit more tricky and they, they'll actually argue with their other accounts and all sorts of things, right? Uh, that's smurfing. Now, don't smurf because it's very easy to get to court house by the administrators. I mean, all they have to do is look at your IP address, obviously. I um, mean, then they'll just ban your IP address as well. Um, and and I can actually say this from personal experience because on that forum that I I used to um, uh, uh, the upon which I used to write, uh, at one point there was someone on that forum who was smurfing, and I noticed that uh, one of the Smurf accounts always responded within, you know, 10 minutes of the other one. And I thought, you know, what's going on there? You know, account A, um, you know, uh, logs out, at, or, you know, uh, posts a, a post at uh, 10 o'clock, and account B uh, always posts, a, you know, a, a, a post at uh, 10.07 or 10.06 or 10.09. And I mentioned this to one of the... Um, moderators and it turns out yes this person was smurfing and they banned this guy from the, the site so don't smurf because it's just too easy to get caught out and as I mentioned earlier you don't want to get caught out on a technicality here all right the next thing never 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 reveal yourself to anyone that, that you're doing this um, and there are, you know you, you might think that um, you can trust this person or you might think that um, you know here's this other guy on the on the, the right who has red pilled ideas I can actually reveal to him that I'm not really an SJW I'm actually one of him um, or you may have think that you've just red pilled someone or something it doesn't matter don't don't um, reveal yourself to those people one of the the um, things about being a successful spy is basically being invisible and you may think you can trust someone but you never know when when that could turn bad for you so it's just silly to do that basically um, all right the next thing uh, again it's sort of along those lines be very careful about private messages with people because uh, the private messages tend to be more personal more detailed and so on and uh, you you open yourself up to the risk of being found out, basically, if you do that, uh, if you engage in private messages with people. I mean, private messages with people with people on the left should really only be um, uh, confined to sort of encouraging them to make idiots of themselves or something along those lines, basically, preferably in public. Um, getting them to sort of uh, do something that will either turn other people off or will um, get them banned or something like that. Um, but generally speaking, you have to be very careful because they'll start asking you a whole lot of difficult questions. And if you don't really know your, your stuff, then you may find that they start to become suspicious of you and so on and so forth so it's probably just best not to go there as to um, private messages with people on the right as I've already mentioned um, you you don't want to reveal yourself to those people so there's no point um, engaging in private messages with them and furthermore even if you were thought that you were um, going to do something else have some sort of discussion with that person on the right um, the, the the private messages might very well become very heated and you could end up getting yourself banned for harassment. Plus, also, the, the, the big thing is that you just don't get any exposure to other people with private messages. Um, the, the whole point of being on this forum is not to um, you know make friends or anything like that. It's about trying to expose as many people as possible to particular ideas or push them in a particular direction. Um, so So... 
you know, t- uh, sending private messages keeps it very private, obviously, between two people. You're not going to get the maximum bang for your buck in terms of how much time you spend on th- on that particular form writing. All right, so um, the, the next thing. Um, also, it may be worth building up to your full persona. So, you know, don't sort of, on your very first post on a forum, come out with you know something that's really full on, because that's also another sign that someone's trolling when someone does that, uh, because that's generally not how people join forum uh, of a forum, um, a forum. Sorry, a forum. It's not how people join a forum usually. They they sort of dip their toe in the water first, so you should build up to things. So, you know, start off with some sort of innocuous questions. Uh, requesting information or something like that, um, or participate in sort of frivolous threads about I don't know, you know, um, some some nonsense, you know, what your favourite TV show is or something. I don't know, um, but but you know, sort of steer clear of um, politics and so on. Initially, you want to um, build up a post count first, or or establish yourself as as someone who posts regularly there, so people start to sort of recognize who you are and they, they interact with you and so on, um, and and you develop relationships and all of that sort of stuff, you, you want to sort of slowly um, gain people's trust. You don't want to just come, you know, out swinging, basically. That, that really will turn people onto you. Um, and so just ease into the politics and so on, um, that's it, it's going to be more effective if you do it that way all right so the next thing beginning operations okay so you know once you've sort of uh, established yourself and so on and you're ready to to start getting political all right so there are certain things in it you, you need or want to do on on these kinds of uh fora um you want to try to make everything political as far as possible and and as often as possible, basically. You want to try to make everything political. Um, in, in the same way that, that SJWs make everything political. Right? So you've, you've really got to ape them in, in this process. Um, and so you may very much want to adopt the methods of those people too. So people like Saul Alinsky with um, Rules for Radicals, you may want to... Um, follow that program of, of steps. I can't remember how many steps there are. I think there are 12. Um, so, you know, you don't want to be rational. You don't want to be reasonable, logical. You don't want to write, you know, huge walls of text, all of that. You want to be snarky. All the usual stuff that, that leftists go on with, right? There's a reason for all of this. I'm, I'm getting to all of this. You know, it's, it all sounds kind of silly at this point. Or why would you do that? But but there's a reason for all of this, right? Um the next thing is you want to be the most left-wing poster on the site. Um, now, that you know that that will very much depend upon the site. Um, you know that that could in, involve being you know full-on crazy SJW, or that could involve just being sort of a, a slightly larger L liberal. Um, but you want to try to be the most left-wing person on the site there's a, there's a reason for that and I'll get to that um, in in good time um, so you'll have to gauge that um, so that you don't get banned for you know pushing pushing the envelope too far too hard too fast um, um, and so you know any any site that sort of um, doesn't have all these these crazies running around on it or controlling the narrative is probably not such a good candidate for this strategy simply because um, you'll have to do a lot of work in getting it to the point where you want to get it um, you know you'll, it, that would require quite a shift in um, bringing codes of conduct and all of that kind of thing um, and you know you might have to become a moderator or something but but it would involve a lot of work in getting it to the point where you would want it so then it might be better um, going somewhere where there are already a whole lot of crazies running around, or at least uh, where that's possible. Um, so you know now I, I get to the sort of the um, objectives here. Um, the ultimate objective in this whole strategy is to either red pill as many people as possible or destroy particular fora. 
Um, the longer you can keep red peeling people, the better. The longer you can keep doing this, um, the, the more effective you'll be. Uh, now, eventually you'll run out of people to do this to because if you're successful, you'll um, red, pe red peel people and drive them away from that site. And then all that will remain is a bunch of crazy left-wing people. And eventually the site will sort of um, die. Uh, or, 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 or it's... Um, you know, it's um, uh, readership or membership will severely decline. New people will come along and go, whoa, you know, what's this? And they won't even bother to, to really become involved. So you want to sort of get to that point. And as an interesting follow-up to that story about um, the guy who jumped down the throat of the Irish guy about gay marriage, at some point later, a year later or something like that, um, I actually saw that Irish guy write in a thread that uh, he missed all of the old posters who had disappeared. He said, you know, the the um the site is really boring now, basically, because there was groupthink. And he also wasn't really posting that frequently on the site anymore, despite the fact that he had been on there for years before. Um, now, maybe... I, I don't think the person who jumped down his throat was actually trying this strategy that... that um, I'm talking about here. I mean, he may have, if he, if that's what he was doing, it was masterful. Um, but I really don't think he was. Um, but nevertheless, the point is that at some point you'll run out of people to red pill, um, and and then the whole place will sort of fall in a heap. But basically, the longer you can keep things going, the better, uh, because you'll, you know, you'll red pill more people, obviously. Um, but at some point, you you may eventually have to jump ship because there'll be no point in remaining on that site at that point. Um, so, you know, you, you may want to sort of have various um, fora in various stages of development. You know, you might be on you know, two or three or more fora and there might be one that's quite advanced in the craziness. There might be one that's sort of getting there and then there might be one that you've just begun. Uh, but nevertheless, you'll have to sort of jump ship from the crazy one when it gets f fully crazy. All right, so now you'll deal with different people on um, on these uh, fora and there will be different ways to deal with them in terms of um, red pilling them because you want to be really crazy you want to be a crazy left-wing person and you're going to essentially encounter four types of people um, you know you'll in there'll be people on the left there'll be people on the right and there'll be uh, moderates and people who are more to the extremes on on either side as well so four different types of people all right, so let's look at dealing with the left first. So you'll probably encounter a lot of moderate leftists. Now what you want to do with these people is you want to ride them as hard as possible. Um, and you want to sort of do the reverse of um, the conservative meme, uh, where you basically want to um, accuse them of not being ideologically pure enough. So think of stuff like uh, the recent thing with Bernie Sanders, where those... Um, uh, what were they, Black Lives Matter or something, where they sort of hijacked his his uh, speech and made it all about them, and then you know they were accusing um, uh, white liberals in the audience of, of being um, racist or something, and then those people were booing them and so on. Um, think of something like that, right? What you want to do is you want to be like the, the Black Lives Matters people and really... Um, get under the skin of moderate leftists by by saying no, you guys are the problem. No, you're the real racist. You're you're not left wing enough, and so on. Right? You want to sort of do that to them, and and do it all in a in a very non rational way. You know, you've got to sort of um. You, you can't be you can't be logical about it. You've got to be very emotive about the whole thing. Basically, you don't want to let them be safe in moderate leftism. You want to essentially offer them an ultimatum, either be full on crazy or, you know, go to the right. And obviously the objective is to get them to the, to, to, to push them to the right. Um, so, you know, that's sort of the troll here. You're going to outflank them from the left and um, not let them um, to play the usual status games and, and signal holiness and all of that sort of stuff over the, the people on the right. You want them to know that they're the, they're not the most holy people on the on the site anymore. They they don't have the most status in the you know um, 
in in leftist circles and so on and you want to really ride them and you know and they'll they'll be like oh my god what are you doing why are you attacking me right um <clears throat> but you know you've got to stand to your ground and you've you've just got to keep um saying the same things to them you know about them being apologists for people to the right and giving cover to racism all you know all the usual nonsense that they go on with right but basically you want to really upset them in in, a, in the most visceral way possible you to, as i said don't make it logical don't write a big wall of text you want to make it really um emotive and and you know get them so that they're actually they feel very uncomfortable physically uncomfortable um so, you know, repeat all of the, the usual leftist memes and so on. Uh, so that's moderate leftists. Your objective is to push those people over to the right. Those people can still be saved. So you want to push those people over to the right. Now, extreme leftists. These people, you're probably not going to be able to red pill these people. Generally speaking, you won't. So what you want to do with these people, they can still be useful to you. You want to draw them even farther to the left. You want to encourage them to be even crazier than they already are. Uh, so and, and, and to go on their witch hunts, including of people uh, of moderate leftists. You want to try to um, subtly induce them to start picking on moderate leftists as well. Particularly as um, people on the right start to disappear from the site. As they start to drop out from the site, this this will pick up steam. Um, but basically, you want to encourage them to be as crazy as possible, engage in all their their witch hunts and so on. It's it's best if you don't get don't encourage them to um, get themselves banned because they'll be less useful to you if they're banned. They're actually really useful if they're in full crazy mode, in turning other people farther to the right. That's that's what you want them to do. You want them to inadvertently red pill a whole bunch of people just by being so um, obnoxious and degenerate and all of the rest of it. Um, so, you know, eventually they will they will aid you in destroying that site. Um, now, dealing with people on the right, um, let's look at moderate people on the right first, you know, conservatives, whomever, right? Um, you want to write them hard, just as hard if not harder than the moderate left-wing people and you have to be irrational, snarky all the all the usual stuff that people on the far left um, do you have to do that, you have to um, you know say hate speech is not free speech hate facts are not facts, you know all, all the usual nonsense and you want to really make them understand that there is nothing they can do to appease you there is no way that they can sort of um, pay the mob, the leftist mob, um, and again give them an ultimatum. Basically, either just um, uh, become fully fledged leftists themselves, which they won't, uh, like fully fledged SJWs, which they won't want to do, or you push them to the alt right, essentially. Um, so you know this is a fairly straightforward um, approach there. It's it's sort of the opposite to what um, the the conservatives are doing, um, in that they're they're sort of um, trying to pull them to the right. You're trying to push them to the right from the left. It's a different it's a different approach. All of this is um people people ex the the left is very used to how the right operates now. They've been beating them for decades. They understand all the the ways people on the right think about you know my logic right or you know my freedom of speech all this this you know these these antiquated ideas that people on the right have um they understand how all of that operates and so you know everyone everyone who's slightly to the left of you is used to someone who's slightly to the right of them and the ways they will deal things and they're very good at sort of brushing them off and so they leave themselves very vulnerable to something crazy happening from their left. That's the whole basis of this approach, right? That, you know, it's sort of like, imagine someone standing there with a shield facing to their right, but they've got their back open to the left. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to hit them from behind, essentially, from the left. Um, so you want to red pill people who are moderately on the right. Now, what about people who are on the alt-right? These people, there are two ways to approach them. One is either you don't attack them. You have to uh, 
you know, be subtle about it. If people ask you, you know, why didn't you ever criticise that guy? You know, just say something like, oh, well, you know, just because why, I'm not even going to give him any platform, right? He's so unreasonable. Something like that. Just fob it off if necessary. But basically, you don't want to start attacking them because you don't want to um, start making things really difficult for them. You know, some people respond to that. Um, if someone's attacking them, that makes them stronger. But a lot of people will just get driven from the site if you do that. So you don't want to do that to them um, because you want to actually keep them there. They're sort of the opposite part in a in a double act. They don't know it. Um, they, they, that's what you're doing. But um, you, need, you need them there to some extent or it aids you in having them there. So you don't want to drive them away. Um, the other way to, to approach them is to softball them. So basically, if you do get involved in a debate with them, um, you want to make terrible arguments and you want to basically just hand them a victory on a platter every time you interact with them. Um, and in such a way that other people will think that you're, um, stupid and unreasonable and nasty and so on. Not not so nasty that you drive them away, but nevertheless, so that other people witnessing this will see that, that you're the bad guy and they're the good guy. You, you kind of have to think, imagine this as being a sort of a um, good cop, bad cop routine. You're the bad cop and they're the good cop. And uh, you want to, you know, pl you know how those routines work with good cop, bad cop. The good cop makes you think he's your friend. He's not really um, the bad cop. Is in cahoots with the good cop, but you know you want to sort of um, trick people into the idea that the the, the people on the alt right are the, the reasonable people, and you're really unreasonable. You want to provide a very stark contrast between the two. There um, now, you you may actually want to c consider having a, 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 an alt right wingman. Um, you have to be very careful about this, um, but it could be very effective if you had someone with whom you were actually in cahoots, um, because you could you could make this really effective. Um, now, I say you have to be careful about this because, as I've mentioned several times already in this talk, you don't want to get caught on a technicality or something like that, or you know something very silly. Um, so you know. Don't do something like you log in at a particular time and then he logs in 10 minutes later, right? That would be very, very obvious. You need to keep it random or you need to make it appear as though you're in different time zones or something like that. Um, you don't want to express any familiarity with one another um, and maybe even you don't want to um, be from, from a similar geographic location and so on. So, you know, find a, a wingman who's in another country, on another continent even. Uh, but, you know, that that's something worth considering, having a, a wingman in this so that you can kind of, um, uh, you know, play the good cop, bad cop routine here. So that's basically the, the gist of this approach. Um, as I said, it's it's about um, doing something that's, that's unexpected because, as I said, the right has been losing for decades. They keep trying the same thing. It's not working, and th the only times when when the rice is successful is when they do different things. And as I've already said, it's it's um, you know it can be very good trolling people from the right. There's nothing wrong with that, and and it it has been successful to some extent. But I think this is another uh, possible strategy that can be applied. That you know the more approaches we take, the harder it will be for for people to really get our number. Um, so. Let me know what you think about this. Thanks for listening.